Today I will show you how to extract deadly tropane alkaloids from the terrestrial seeds. Do not try this at home as these alkaloids are more toxic than cyanide. The chemicals you are going to need are the tura seeds, ammonia, hexane, heptane, calcium chloride, hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid and distilled water. The most important ingredient in this extraction are of course the deuterostromonium seeds. They were ground up to increase the surface area and then they were put into this big extractor. It is not a succyl extractor because it has no siphoning cycles, but it's an extractor and it works. If you know what these are called, let me know down in the comments. Anyways, back to the extraction. As our tropane alkaloids might be present in the form of a salt, you need to add ammonia to freebase them. Ammonia is not too caustic and will not hydrolyze the tropane alkaloids, which are actually simple esters of tropic acid. If sodium hydroxide were used instead, the esters may be hydrolyzed to form tropanol, scopine and tropic acid, which we also made synthetically in a previous video. As an extraction solvent, we decided to use hexane, but as I eventually ran out of hexane, we also added heptane. About 500 milliliters of hexane and 200 milliliters of heptane were used. Heating and stirring were ramped up to the maximum and we continued with the extraction for 12 hours. To speed it up, you need to wrap the apparatus in aluminium foil. This keeps it warm and thus speeds up the extraction because solvent molecules are bumping around much more quickly. It also allows more solvent to condense at the top and flow through the crushed up detura seeds. Once it was warm enough, these bubbles became visible. Ammonia is less soluble in a warm medium and because exit and gases were slightly alkaline, this was ammonia gas. If you do not have enough reasons yet not to do this extraction, because of the immense toxicity of the alkaloids, add the production of nasty ammonia gas on top of that list. While fooling around with a UV light for a different upcoming project, I noticed that the extracted liquid and the seeds glowed under ultraviolet light. As tropane alkaloids are not fluorescent, the fluorescence seems to come from some other unknown contaminant in the seeds. It surely looked beautiful though. To get residual solvents out of the extractor, you need to cover up the pipe for solvent vapor using the most important creation of mankind, duct tape. With the help of pressurized air, all solvents can then be pushed out of the extractor. Now there's a hydrocarbon solution of alkaloids, nasty contamination and a touch of ammonia. To continue, about 80% of the solvents were removed using a simple distillation. I always love watching the vapor front climbing up the glass. The entire distillation took only an hour, recovered solvent will be used for other projects and the solution of alkaloids must now be handled with even greater care. Remember, this small amount of liquid contains the toxin of thousands of the tura seeds. For the next step, the dirty looking solution was transferred to a separatory funnel. The flask was rinsed with about 30 milliliters of the solvent, which was previously distilled off. To get alkaloids out of the organic layer for further purification, about 150 milliliters of 14.9 sulfuric acid were added. The alkaloids form water-soluble sulfuric acid salts, which do not dissolve in the hexane-heptane mix. The funnel was shaken for about a minute and the bottom layer containing the product was drained into a flask. The top layer was discarded. Apparently we didn't wait long enough and thus some hexane made it over. This layer fluoresced brightly. As the solution still looks dirty, a vacuum filtration may be able to remove that floating matter. But sadly this was not the case and the contamination was so fine and slimy that it clogged up the filter. A different purification method would involve centrifugal force, so all liquid was transferred to centrifuge tubes. These were then washed on the outside so could touch them without gloves and without contaminating any equipment. The centrifuge was allowed to do its job for 10 minutes at 3000 rpm. Once finished, three layers were visible. The top organic layer can be discarded, a layer of nasty residue formed, which is also waste, and a bottom layer containing the alkaloids. Our top layer was drained off, but we were not able to simply decant of the brown sludge. Therefore the product was transferred to another flask alongside the sludge and the next step should be able to remove the residue. Remember all of that sulfuric acid which was added? We need to neutralize it now. To get back the free base alkaloids, ammonia solution was added until the solution was alkaline. To extract the free base alkaloids, DCM was added as a solvent. One benefit of using DCM is that it sinks to the bottom due to its high density and this gives us one serious advantage. It is so heavy that even the sludge will float on top of the dichloromethane. It is a good sign that the DCM layer does not fluoresce at all. The bottle was shaken and allowed to stand overnight before transferring it to a separatory funnel. The DCM layer was simply drained off into an evaporating dish and the solvent was evaporated using a fan and a hot plate on low heat. Half an hour later we were left with this solid. It is basically enslaved death and must thus be handled with utmost care. 
As it still looks dirty, it was dissolved in MTBE and if the solubility in MTBE does not suffice, DCM may be added again. If I knew that the product still had contamination, I would have filtered the DCM solution before evaporating of the solvent. But as I thought that it would dissolve later on, I transferred it directly to the bottle and this was a mistake. As you can see, there's a lot of leftover floating matter and we are going to get rid of it using a filtration. Tropane alkaloids are decently soluble in ether and should therefore pass straight through the filter. These are the leftovers. The free based tropane alkaloids may be soluble in ether, but the hydrogen chloride salts of them are not. Therefore we are going to pass anhydrous hydrogen chloride to the solution to precipitate the product. The anhydrous hydrogen chloride will be produced by a dripping concentrated hydrochloric acid onto anhydrous calcium chloride. When the hydrogen chloride passes through the ether solution, it immediately becomes white and this precipitate forms. Only 20 ml of hydrochloric acid were consumed and I decided to stop. A lot of precipitate had formed and it looked like no additional precipitate was forming. We could do a filtration to get our products, but there's a fine particulate and some would pass through the filter. Besides that, there's leftover hydrogen chloride in the ether and it would damage my pump. For this reason, we are going to boil off the ether. It took about half an hour until no more solvent came over. This solvent in the end did not want to evaporate off and therefore I stopped. First, we tried to remove leftover solvents by using a hot plate set to 130 degrees Celsius and later on a vacuum chamber. As it still did not want to try, I tried to freebase it by adding sodium bicarbonate solution, but I guessed that we messed up. It didn't look good anymore and I think that we messed up by adding hydrogen chloride gas and not precipitating the freebase in water. I decided to test for the presence of alkaloids anyways by adding Dragon Dose reagent. If your solution turns red and this precipitate forms, there are alkaloids present and we got a positive. To try to save at least some product, it was vacuum filtered and washed with distilled water. In the end, everything went through the filter and we got a 0% yields, but we know that there are alkaloids present. Let's be honest here, our yields absolutely sucked. I will have to redo this extraction and next time I will be doing it differently. Firstly, we are going to freebase the alkaloids by pulverizing the seeds even better and by soaking them in ammonia for a week before drying them again. Next, we are also going to use an even larger amount of seeds. I have some more seeds here, but I will need to get more. And to extract more seeds, we are going to use an even bigger extractor. Yes, I bought a 2 liter extractor fitting to this reflux condenser and it's massive. It's currently at the glass blower, so I can show it to you, but you can stay tuned for that. We also got a 6 liter boiling flask with a fitting heating mantle, so the next extraction will be bigger. Because we got so little yields, I'm not even going to bother with purifying the product even further and not even with separating the different tropane alkaloids. But if it works out the next time, we are going to separate them. Absolutely. Lastly, we might use a different extraction medium and I guess that our problem was that the hydrogen chloride destroyed the alkaloids. Because the hydrogen chloride excess might have destroyed the alkaloids, we are going to dissolve the alkaloid salts in water next time and crash out free base. This method is less harsh on the product. Before breaking off the video, I would like to thank all of my Patreons because you make it possible to film all of this crazy stuff. Thanks for the support. I really, really appreciate it.